Whoa! What you're seeing right behind me, guys, is part of the seventh wonder of the world. This here is the great wildebeest migration, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can witness this on a budget. This video has been sponsored by Johnny Walker. Today we're traveling to the Maasai Mara and we're actually going to be traveling by road. It's one of the ways you can save money while traveling to the Mara. So you can actually choose to go with a four-wheel drive or a van. So we're going with a four-wheel drive thanks to Somac Safaris. Six hours later and we have finally made it. This is the travel crew for the trip. We have Bobo, Dave, Chloe and Zanel. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Whoa, look at all those birds. <laughs> already, already. <laughs> how, I mean, how did it get to you? How did it get there? How did I it get to you? Because they're flying this that's direction. That's like aim. So that's like World War II type of stuff. No. <laughs> that's, that's good luck, man. So we're going to see a kill. Yeah, we're going to see the migration. Okay. Yeah. We've just checked in and we're actually staying in a budget camp which is inside the National Reserve. This is what it gives you. So we're paying $68 per person per night. Pretty straightforward. You've got two beds. Right over here is the washroom. So everything is nice and clean. You have a nice sort of outdoor-ish style shower. But one of the drawbacks of this place is there's no plugs in the room. So if you need to charge your stuff, you actually have to go and sit at the dining spot they have a couple of extension cables lined up and you connect all your stuff there to charge it's kind of annoying but i guess that's just what you get when you're traveling tomorrow on a budget right outside our room this here is our view and that right there is the Talek River. Now you have the option of staying outside the National Reserve, which would be a little bit cheaper, but I would suggest that you don't do that because when you want to enter the National Reserve, it takes a lot of time if you're waiting in the queue, especially during peak season when people are coming in. And so you waste a lot of time at the gate itself. And so I would recommend you pay the extra few dollars just to stay inside the National Park. It's probably from 10 to $20 extra but so worth it. So the reason why we're here at the Mara is so that we can watch the Great Migration, which is the movement of wildebeest from Serengeti into Kenya. They move here so that they can feed on the grass on the side of Kenya. And so they have to cross the Mara River to get here. And it's this crazy phenomenon that happens. It's the seventh wonder of the world. And so that's what we want to experience. Now, the challenge is that recently, apparently rangers burned down grass. So that uh, new grass can grow thanks to the rains but it hasn't been raining and so the grass is still all burnt out and they haven't been experiencing much of a migration this year so fingers crossed that we get to see a migration for this trip and the safari vehicle is open that was a big moment <laughs> <laughs> all right let the safari begin you guys look lamb crossing they put the lambs in the park to bring the lions for the tourists Big money scheme, the Messiah. Google it. <laughs> you, no, you're lying though, right? No. <gasps> oh my god. I have never seen lion cubs this up close. It's not even been five minutes into the game drive. It was the lamb. <laughs> no, it wasn't. What did I say? <laughs> Whoa. Oh. It's all thanks to you getting pooped on. <laughs> Unless you have your own four-wheel drive or you know the Masai Mara really well, then you'll have to get someone to bring you all the way to the Masai Mara. Now, there's a couple of ways in which you can get to the Mara and do your game drives. The cheapest being using public forms of transport where you'll get a Matatu from Nairobi all the way to Narok Town. And then from there, you'll grab a taxi that will bring you all the way to the gate. At the gate, there's a couple of different land cruisers just waiting outside with Maasai guides that can take you inside so you can hire them to drop you off at your accommodation or take you on your game drives for a couple of days. The second and a little bit more convenient way to go about it is to actually hire a land cruiser or a van from Nairobi itself which will bring you all the way to the Maasai Mara and will take you on your game drives. So I've been following this page on Twitter it's called Great Migration Camps and apparently this was this morning Whoa! So fingers crossed we get to see the same tomorrow, right? I'm confident, I'm confident.
this morning we had quite a bit of a scare so we heard some lions right outside our room and there's no one to actually come and pick you to escort you to the reception and so we're sitting inside and trying to call Zanel and Chloe and David to send some help for us and they're like yeah you kind of have to get out yourself there might be lions around us and we're walking towards the car we made it good morning good Samuel morning, morning. can hear lions roar uh, at six uh, kilometers away it's, yeah. it's actually insane are you guys excited to see the migration yeah i'm kind of hoping that we have to sit around and wait for a long time so that like the five of us can really get to know each other uh yeah uh, i kind of came here to see animals <laughs> The sun is rising, you can see the hot air balloons rising as well. We got a beautiful lion just sitting over there. What a beautiful start to the morning. <laughs> was this the lion that was scaring us in the morning? <laughs> yeah, you're right, they're really loud. Wow. <laughs> things about traveling to the Mar during this season is that you're very likely to find hunts and seeing predators feeding on prey. So right now we've just found another lion that's actually feeding on a wildebeest because there's just so much game in the Mara right now. Yesterday when we came to the reserve, we didn't manage to pay for our entry fee. So now we've come to the airstrip to pay our entry fee one day later. And now this is going to be our second expense. So entry for Kenyan citizens is a thousand shillings per person per day. But for non-residents, it's a whopping $70 per person per day. <laughs> I'm sure that must have hurt. Ooh. Hurts, yeah. <laughs> if you want to save money and you're a foreigner, <laughs> you kind of have to become a citizen. Do you, do you think you can do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mambo Power. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Guys, this is the craziest thing. Right in the middle of nowhere, I met Ashish who follows uh, my vlogs. He just came to the car. He's like, Are you adventurous? Saying, a Very good guy. Lots of promotion from him. So we're busy because of him. And follow his videos, subscribe him. That's amazing, man. Cheers, and guys. thank you for the support as well. Very good sound, it's cool. a pleasure. Guys, this is the longest line of wildebeest. Right. Sam just said that there's a small river over here that they might cross. This is gonna be our first crossing. This is insane. You guys, there's gotta be hundreds of these wildebeest. And they're crossing, they're crossing, they're crossing. Oh, wow. oh my god. <gasps> That was the most unexpected crossing we've seen. We thought we'd have to go to the Mara River, but turns out we got them crossing at this random river. No crocodile killings, no hippo killings, no stampedes, but that was insane. Everyone was caught by surprise and we were all freaking out trying to find our spots to take pictures and videos of the crossing. It's unbelievable. What? It was like Five minutes. two or three minutes. Yeah. Two or three minutes at least. Quick, yeah, especially yeah. when there were a lot of them. It was yeah. just like a couple of seconds. And they don't go on a line. They go in like a big herd. It goes by quick. It's crazy to think that just a couple of seconds ago, this river was full of wildebeest. <laughs> So you have what? a wildebeest and a zebra that are just chilling under a tree alone. The rest of the herd is so far away from them. It's like forbidden love. Okay guys, bye. Hope you make another species. I've been explained to a little bit more about the migration and how it all works. Now you have the migration where the wildebeest move from Serengeti to the Maasai Mara. And then within the Maasai Mara, the wildebeest follow a sort of path where they're eating grass and then they come to the Mara River and then they have to cross the Mara River because there's more food on the other side. And that's where you see something called a crossing. That's what people mistake as the Great Migration. Such a beautiful and unexpected turnout of events. So right now we've stopped over at this lone tree just around this land. It's vast. There's so many wildebeest all around us. And we're going to be having a beautiful sundowner here where we are going to compete and I'm going to destroy him in the cocktail. So 
Are you ready, Finn? I was born ready. This is what I'm here for. So what are you making? All right, today I'm going to be making something called a go and follow Chloe and Dave on YouTube. I mean, the presentation. Mm-hmm. Cheers. I'm really scared. <laughs> that is really good. Deadly. Wow. Ooh, that's really good. It's so smooth. All right, what are you making? I call this the Adventure Sing X Travels because I kind of wanted to use Tando, but you know, you kind of helped with half of it, so. I helped you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hope you do. It, it tastes like something you'd get from a real fancy cocktail bar. I'm actually surprised that it, it turned out that good. I wasn't expecting it to be that yeah. good. It's like I would order this. It does taste like one of those really expensive cocktails you get. Yeah. They're like strong and like those like little glasses. What do you think is gonna win? I, I kind of I kind of like the sweetness of yours. I like, yeah. The the sugar rim was like a little trick, you know, to trick them into loving mine more. But I think oh. the complexity of yours truly is gonna take you to yeah. over the finishing line. Yeah. I hope you win. Thank you, man. We thought both your drinks were not hitting the right spot, so we combined them, and here it is, the ultimate. We'll count it as a tie. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Just keep walking. <laughs> and now you walk off into the distance. Well, maybe the same way. The man who can walk. Good morning, guys. Good morning. So the agenda for today is to go hard and heavy. We're going to be enjoying an African massage the whole day, a full day game drive so that we can witness the great wildebeest migration crossing along the Mara River. So apparently they cross three times during the day in the morning at about 10 a.m. Then at noon at between 1 to 3 p.m. and in the evening between 4 to 6 p.m. So hopefully we get to catch one of those. The roof is open and the game drive officially begins with lions! Look at them! There's like thousands and thousands of wildebeest as far as the eye can see. And right over here, there's a bunch of lions. Well, they're playing for now, but we hope they're gonna hunt. Sam, do you think they'll hunt? I'm with their full. Maybe later, because they're playing since they're full now. Eh? I think we're a bit late for a hunt. Oh my god, they're so cute. I want to pick one up and take it home and introduce it to my dogs. <laughs> you want to introduce a hyena to your dogs? <laughs> dogs are crazy. Your dogs will be eaten. <laughs> Guys, there's a whole herd, a huge line of wildebeest running towards the river. Yeah, this is now. How to do it? Help hope. We're gonna get to see a crossing. We're gonna get to see a crossing. <gasps> Guys, look at all of them run. Woo! Oh, they're making their way to the river. Oh my god. Guys, a little mini crossing. Just caught the end of that mini crossing. That was such an adrenaline rush. <laughs> the excitement is building. The excitement is building. We've made it to the Mara River, and right over there, there's a small group of wildebeest that are possibly going to start crossing. If they were to cross, yeah. So they might not. <laughs> no, but you see, it is 50-50. Uh, <laughs> oh man. No, no guarantee, eh? Because everybody is patiently waiting. Guys. Can you cross already? We've been waiting five hours now. So rude. Guys. <laughs> Can you cross no, already? <laughs> We've been waiting for five hours. Why did the wildebeest cross the river? Why? To get to the other side. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Six hours later and we finally might get a chance to see a huge build beast migration. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. They're just there. They're just there. They're standing there and waiting. Yeah, they're crossing. They're crossing. They're crossing? Yeah. <gasps> they're crossing! Guys, after six hours of waiting, they're finally crossing. Definitely worth every single minute of waiting. Yes. Yeah. And now I can confidently say I've checked off something from my bucket list. I am mind blown. It was nothing dramatic, no crocodile kills and um, you know, wildebeest being swept away or being killed, but it was still something so spectacular and so grateful that we managed to catch the crossings. That was that was insane. crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, scared. And that guys brings us to the end of a beautiful trip here in the Mara on a budget. And definitely when I say budget, it's really relative. If you're a non-resident, definitely $240 a day is not cheap. But then that leads to the question, is this trip worth those $240 a day? And I would say it's extremely worth it, especially during the peak season when all the game is here in the Mara. There's animals as far as the eye can see, the beautiful crossings of the wildebeest, lions, hunts, cheetahs, everything. And it's just so beautiful. So I highly recommend it. And I think it's really worth it. And you guys have to try it. So if you guys enjoyed this video and if it helped you, please make sure to hit that like button. It really helps this video go to more people and definitely helps more people visit the Mara on a budget. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one.